Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. So today I thought that we would do some more sewing. So let's get started. Okay, so this is just one of my tiny little multi cells. I've used this just as like a little dip it to make little holes in each of them. I don't know if you can see that okay. But let's get started with some kale. So this is Black Magic Kale, which is very exciting. You want to do half and half Russian kale. Ah, oh, I got on a discount this the last hour. Always look out for sales, guys. They're fantastic. I'm going to do probably two per cell, just in case. I'm only going to do about four cells of these. Yep, that'll do. So every so often, I'll plant them a little bit more. And they should be harvestable in August, which is very exciting, isn't it? All the way, ah. Oh all the way until february the next year which is really cool this is kale as well called candy floss kale so i'm gonna go ahead and plant this up as well this is a mix of kale and i've really enjoyed this a little while ago when we grew this so i'm gonna go ahead and pop some of these down as well end up with more kale than i know what to do with which is good so this is just a mix of kale I do like my mixes, as you know, and then from that, I shall pick varieties that I really enjoy. And then I will pick them and use them. But until I've decided which ones I like the most, mixes work really good. The great thing about kale is that even the little seedlings are edible. So once again, you can just pull them out and use them as a, as a microgreen, which is very exciting. Right, next, next up. Please. The next thing I'm going to do is most probably some cabbage. This is called January King 3. This is a purple cabbage. We really like purple cabbage in this house. So we're going to be growing a quite a bit of cabbage. We're going to do four of these as we've got quite a lot of purple cabbages to sow. So sowing it now, I can plant it out in a couple of uh, next month. And I'll be able to have a nice early harvest about the end of July, which is going to be great. So that's done. Next one, I thought I'd go for a XL cabbage, which will be great, lovely variety. This variety is called Holland Winter XL, which I thought I'd use these last year, but it doesn't look like I have. Nope, fine. Cities are quite large, look. Right. Oh no, oh, I'm really doing badly at this. They're quite large seeds, I say, as I threw them everywhere. So I'm doing two each. Oh, there's going to be cabbages everywhere in this. It's like pill dust the entire floor. So I'm going to go ahead and sow these, but I'm going to use this packet. They're the same ones. So these are called Cabalos, and they are a very, very, very bright red cabbage, which is very exciting. Now, Let's have a little look. So these will be a earlier cabbage in August if I sow them now, which is very good because I want a nice early cabbage because that's where we start to have coleslaw. Now, I'm going to sow lots of different cabbages. They will be all different times that they'll be ready because they're different varieties, if that makes sense. But also, well, that's a bit... Um, also, they'll have different qualities. This was a pointy head one called Dutchman. I actually really enjoyed this cabbage a little while ago. It was last year that I grew it. It was great. This is just a new packet of the same variety. So these are quite decent sized seeds, as you can see. All brassica seeds look pretty much the same, don't they? So I'm not expecting any of these seeds not to come up, really. But I am doing two of each. Just to, like, safe bet here. I've got a cabbage called Red Drumhead. I really like this cabbage. Grew it a couple of years ago. It was really good. Just a normal cabbage. And all of these have different days. So like I said, they're going to be. Oh, this is not going well, is it? I really, really fancy cabbage this year. So every year I go into the year being like, oh, I really feel inspired by this. And this year, coal crops have been very inspiring to me, as you can see. This one is a cabbage called Wheeler Imperial. It is a looser head, pointy cabbage, 
which is quite nice. I do think they are very, very flavourable. They're just in the packet like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put two in each for this one. To see what we're going to be growing in this last little row here. But before we do that, we have to remember to label things because to be honest, I've always forget. Always label everything unless you forget is the rule. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this drier compost on top. Like this and then I just basically fill up the little holies with them like so. Now that will make a nice mulch on top so it losing so much water. And I'm gonna take a label which I already made over here and I'm gonna label it cabbage because that's what they are. Okay, next I'm going to grow some of this pak choy. Pak choy is one of our favourite things to eat in stir fries and stuff. So you know we overwintered it this year. The red is really good for a cold weather crop because the red gets redder when it gets colder. It is named Ruby, whereas this one is ha Hanakan, which is a green variety. They're really great. Um, I'm gonna grow them now, so it would be better if I grew them in the spring but what can you uh, in the autumn sorry but i'm going to try them now I'll probably harvest them at the end of april so they're going to have a quick turnaround which is quite nice that's why we want to sow these every few weeks for every two weeks we'll do so i'm going to go ahead and sow two of them in each and hope they both come up but because i didn't have great germination rate on my last batch i'm going to make sure that i guarantee it almost by planting two. And what I can do is to use them as microgreens as well, because they're part of the brassica family. They're fine and edible, the whole plant. There we go. So they're all my brassicas done, which is very lovely. So that's what we're going to do. Once again, I'm gonna make sure that I label them. You can grow them for a baby leaf as well. It's what I tend to do in the spring. And that has a has a hadakan is eight weeks in that stand. Look, this is a bigger version of it. That's really good for like now where you really want to harvest very quickly. Not including baby leaves. You could grow them for baby leaves in a lot quicker time. But I think I'm just gonna do them as a whole. Right, so we're gonna start off with this leek, which is called uh Musselberg. It is a late hardy winter variety but we can actually start growing sowing it now so we sow it from now till april and then it is a later leak it would be a very slow growing we we'll, we'll want the benefit later on so i might do two rows of these and look how beautiful they are these are black seeds i'm gonna do two in each because i want to make sure that they come up you might do three in some because leeks do well, multi-sown anyway. I mean, especially if I'm going to be waiting so long for them. Might as well. This only works though, guys, if you have good soil. Just to let you know, because I don't want you trying it and thinking, oh, why didn't it work? You have to have quite fertile soil to do this, because I've tried it where I didn't have such as good spot soil. And it doesn't really work too great. I think I want to multi sow all my leeks to make more room so they can be sown for now and plant them out around about June and they will be next year even harvesting them. Okay, so onwards and upwards with the leeks, they're my long cropped ones, and let's go for some earlier cropping ones. So these ones will be in October that I will be actually harvesting them, so a lot earlier than these ones. So I'm going to go ahead and do one row of these. Once again, I'm going to multi-sow them. Really, you want two to four in a clump, which will be nice. Oh, look, comes with a label. You know I love a free label. There we go. We'll do a whole line of these, I think. Oh, my goodness. It's actually, look, it's stuck in the packet. It's awful. Oh, God. I had to rip something to get that out. Look. <laughs> anyway. 
And they weren't going anywhere anytime soon. All right. So these I want to do a whole line of. In fact, I might move them over here and start over here and leave that for now. So I'm just going to do four in a clump. It doesn't matter if I get too many because I can just go ahead and thin them. Once again, these are edible as small greens and they're so good for you small greens i'm not counting really i'm just grabbing and dropping some i've got three some i've got five some i've got six um, and i will thin them as needed so i'm not really that worried about wasting seed because remember i bought these for 10p and also i'm more worried about getting a good germination on old seeds because that's why you buy them for 10p you don't buy like premium seeds for 10 pence There we go. So I'm, what I'm doing here is just rolling down the, the seed packet and then I put it back and I'm going to roll down the seed packet again to try to stop them from falling out. So these were the uh, Blue Disson ones, French variety. They're very leaky. <laughs> They're pretty much all the same leaks, aren't they, apart from when you but get them. So this one, again, is a short season leak. This one is an organic leak called De Keratan. This also has a little label, which is very exciting. I'm going to do exactly the same, just cut the top off of that, and I'm going to go ahead and put these in. I don't think there will be a very much of a difference. Pretty much the same seed. I do like the look of leek seeds. Leek seeds and onion seeds all look the same to me. Whoops, don't know where that one went. But the only difference is it's the short and long season of them. These are the organic seeds. I do like organic if I can get it at a reasonable price. Because sometimes it's very expensive. But I think it is good if you can get it. Still absolutely oodles. So even if they are slightly more expensive, you just get absolutely loads in there sorted for leaks i am right okay so i did have one more leak where are you leakies where are you there these are my old leaks so i'm gonna go ahead and do one row of these old leaks just to see if they're still viable i probably over sew these on the basis that i don't, i think these are probably older than jasmine these seeds so i don't have any idea what type of leaks they are but they are definitely leek seeds and they're quite large. That's all I can tell you about them. That's all I know. So I'm not really that bothered about how many's in there because I'm pretty, pretty sure not all of them are going to germinate because they're so old. And I think for my last ones, I'm going to go ahead and put some of these longer season in because I'm quite in, interested in trying these and having them as a longer season crop so that I have them over the winter, which is very, very good because onions do store, but I tend to get soft onions about this time of year. And I'll have these as fresh plants, which is very good. Obviously, if the weather's okay. Overwintering crops is always a risk, a risk that you take and you gamble on. But I'm excited if I can. So I'm going to have to remember to sew these at least once more. And then I'll have them for winter, which is very exciting. I do know. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some compost over the top. Like so. Just so that they have something to kind of grow through, I guess. Right, next one. I am literally going to sew some of these. Probably all of them if I can. These are um, sweet pea, they're called mammoth. And I get six blooms that are very large. Look, oh, look how many seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one each because they're called mammoth. So I don't want them to think that they can't have enough room. So the more room you get, I'm assuming the larger the flowers I'll get. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them into the pots individually and hopefully I'll get blooms that I can share at work. 
which will be very lovely, won't it? I wonder if I get a whole tray. I don't think I will. That was the whole lot there. And I didn't get a label, which I just think is rude. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. And I know that I keep telling you not to do this. I'm going to do this. But it is wrong. I'm going to put the rest of the row of these of these flowers. And you don't really want to sow them in pots because it ruins the tap root. But I'm going to do it anyway because I don't listen to myself. Oh, it comes with a label. You know how much I love that. All right. Oh, sunflower I've grown so long that as soon as the sunflower comes up, I can recognise it. So I won't label these. <laughs> well, you said you label everything. No, I, I try. What can I do? Right, so the last ones. Let's go for some... Should we go for some these golden marigolds? One. Oh, that's a big horny one. Two, three, four. I've never grown these ones before. The mar these aren't the marigolds that I know. I'm pretty sure these were had another name, but that's what it says on it. So, don't know. I'm pretty sure that's just legitly a stick. But look how weird they are. They're like little caterpillars. Mm. I'll try to keep collect my own seed for these ones as well which is gonna be exciting i do know so i'm gonna put them quite deep because they're quite big seeds so that's why i've made such a large hole for them i'm not gonna like crush them down actually that's a really bad idea right up until there it was and obviously i'll know what they are and then these ones are marigolds, which I don't think are called marigolds, but I shall label them what the seed packet says they are. Maybe it's just the French marigolds are different and that's the only ones I know. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Ha ha! So moving onwards and upwards, they are going to go right next to you. Multi sown beetroot. Oh no, so, there we go. Multi sown beetroot. Where's my scissors? I'm gonna start off cutting the head off of this. Now, beetroot, the seeds are actually not seeds, they're like cluster of seeds. I think you can get them where there is like a cluster of seeds, but they're only guaranteed to have one in there. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to literally just grab a couple and put them in because. I want to multi-sow these little beetroot and I want quite a few of them at the same time because I plan to make pasta out of them so that will be very exciting. Now you can sow up to four seeds in a hole but I do like just a random like two, three, uh, fine that's what I'm going to do just like that. Now, I could easily do a whole tray of those, but I'm not going to yet. Look, there's one there. Because I have other things that I must grow, including this perennial spinach. Perennial spinach is incredibly light. Um, beetroot. I think it is a beet leaf. So it's very, very, it's basically the same plant. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this as well. I'm going to do two lines of this because you know that it will just cook down so quickly. I'm going to single sew a cluster of seeds in there. Oh, oh I'm just going to throw all of the seeds over the floor. And these make great salads and all sorts of stuff like that. But so that we have a comparison, should we do some spinach as well? Now, this spinach that I'm about to sow is spinach that I got in the same year I got that uh, leak. So, I don't know if this is going to come up. So, I'm going to go ahead and multi, multi sow this. Sow this in fours. Now, it's good in fours or in threes. So, we're all good in this part. But I doubt most of this is going to come up because, like I said, it's very old seed. But I could be wrong. Now, these are huge, these seeds. Them. Look good, don't they? Oh, that's a lot. There's two, four. It'll be nice if this all comes up. I love spinach. 
and it's freezy so well so it'll be lovely for the winter where we have lots of soup, soup, soups and stews which will be very much improved with some spinach I can't believe I have never sown this and I've had it for so long these seeds are huge I've never really it purposely done spinach so this is quite exciting <laughs> they look massive those seeds I don't know why I keep pouring them so high up I'm asking for them to bounce everywhere and they are it's worth a little little go I guess it's worth see what happens I hope they grow but who knows I'm really excited about this but first off we're gonna have to start off putting a little bit more compost in that and we're going to be sowing some lettuce and some herbs so start off with this webs wonder which i once again got on discount i think by now you're like you know you got me on discount you've got to time the sales don't you try to always look out for the sales right i'm going to try to get two in one hole oh or four <laughs> these are such tiny seeds you can get them as tape I've never grown anything with tape, but apparently it's a lot easier than using these tiny seeds. Or you can get them pelleted as well. I've heard good things about pelleted seeds. All right, so that's that one done. Now, I'll plant this out and I should get heads in July time, which is nice. This is ideal for sp summer or spring, so that's good. Now, this is the one that I'm really super excited about is this iceberg lettuce which is red and it's called red iceberg it's a really sweet head it stops it from bolting it's very bolt resistant even so that's very exciting i think i'm going to do two rows of this it's a beautiful seed as well look at that it's a lovely seed now once i've done a first sowing of this I won't be so worried about not having it come up. I might even do one each. But at this moment in time, I'm a, I don't really know how well this is going to sew. But I'm sure it's going to be fine. Yeah. No. No. I'm sure I'll definitely not look at that later and be like, well, what does that mean? So these are my purple sprout and broccoli. I'm going to go ahead and sow half a row of this because I want to make sure that I have enough broccoli. I didn't do this last year and I regretted it. I really regretted not having purple sprouted broccoli. It has a very long season for purple sprouting broccoli. And if you don't, sow it in the right season then you will not get any so i want to do it now before i forget because last year i kind of like was like oh i definitely sowed that and then when everything came up i realized i hadn't which was awful that's all i'm gonna do that's it that's all of them and they're just two crushed seeds that's weird right next is this sprout and broccoli which is called Lan lannister which is a purple and a white variety. I'm going to go ahead and finish the row in this. So you only end up sowing this once a year. And it has a very short window. But a very, very long. Sorry, I had a problem with my camera. So these are all purple sprouting broccolis. Okay, and I'm just about to go on to some Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts also has a really long season. And they're important to get in nice and early so that you don't miss that season because once it's gone, it's gone. So I'm going to go ahead and ensure that I have the Brussels sprouts because Jasmine loves them. There. So Brussels sprouts, that is. And these are just organic ones called Georgina. Ger 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 that. There. So I'm going to go ahead and cover these up. And then I'm going to go ahead and put them in the grow tent. 
and basically I'm going to sort out all of the ones I need to take down the allotment to make sure there's room for these bad boys. So let's get started doing that. If you like content like this, please go ahead and subscribe because you're going to be seeing a lot of this, a lot of sewing and a lot of growing and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Woo! Oh no, look, I've dropped kale everywhere. Oh my days. What a disaster.